I welcome the speaker and all the participants for day six faculty development program on software tools for mathematical education. It's my pleasure to introduce our uh, speaker, Dr. Felix, Felix Agustin, sir. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics, School of Advanced Sciences, Velour Institute of Technology, Chennai. He received his PhD in University of Madras, Chennai. He has 10 years of teaching experience. At present, he is guiding six PhD research scholars. He contributed 49 research articles and he delivered 25 invited talks for various workshops, seminars, conferences, and faculty development program. With this short note, I request Dr. Uh, Felix, sir, Yes, to take over the session. Yes, yes. Thank uh, you, Thank sir. you, ma'am, for your uh, wonderful introduction about me. Ah. And uh, at the outset, I would really thank uh, the management of Banariyaman Institute of Technology, Sathi Magalam, and Providence College for Women, Kannur, uh, for arranging this kind of workshop, which really, you know, making the faculty and research scholars to learn these tools. And uh, the, of course, the head of the department is Saravanam. Moti, Annie Christie, uh, and the coordinator, Dr. Parimala, Dr. K. Karupai, and all the advisory committee uh, for making the, the proper faculties to organize this kind of uh, uh, wonderful uh, with, uh, what is the series of webinar. And uh, I would really thank my friend, Dr. Patidhan, who is the brainchild of this event, and who always encourages all of our team members to learn this kind of uh, tools. And uh, before I was coming to VAT, even I didn't know what is MATLAB and R. But once you come to VAT, you know, VAT will make us uh, to learn all the platform. So here, uh, for all the students, we are uh, uh, demonstrating mathematics and uh, statistics through MATLAB and R. So our VAT students are really good at uh, MATLAB and R. And, uh, this Scilab, you know, the two weeks before uh, Dr. Park even asked me to take something on uh, tools. I said, I'll go for either R or MATLAB. And before me, Dr. Anna Grace and uh, Mon Manivan has taken this MATLAB and R, and he asked me to go for something. So I said, so, okay, then I'll go for linear algebra using Scilab. And uh, before this webinar, he I didn't uh, touch upon this Scilab, but I know very well that it is the alternative sources of MATLAB, but I didn't practice it uh, before uh, this webinar. So I really thank the organizer who makes me, you know, to learn this tool. And, you know, why I'm telling this, it, it is really simple to learn anything. Everything is open source. You know, you can, we have a plenty of resources out there to learn. Okay. So this webinar, is going to be, you know, uh, giving a seed to all of you. From the seed, you know, you how to sow in your uh, research field and at your uh, academic side to make the victory. So from this, you know, you can eat, uh, yield a lot of fruits to taste it. Okay. I always believe that, and what we learned, uh, the concepts without this tool would be really interesting. And once you have a tools, you know, what we mind would say, always makes us to go for the tool always. But behind the, uh, the, the whatever you're doing, you should understand the concepts. You should very very good at the concepts. Then only you can go for this kind of tools. And if you do, do not know the concepts and applying in, at the tool and getting the result and uh, you know making the research article and get published, it is vain. We cannot bring any novelty in it. So I would always uh, you know suggest to all my students, that if you want to learn uh, this kind of tools, that's good. But before that, you should be very good at your the concepts of the mathematics. Okay, good. This is what I would like to give you. And uh, today we will be learning some introduction about the Scilab to the, the linear algebra. Okay. So before we shall go into that, I request all of you, please download this Scilab. So Scilab.org, you can type it. In, at your Google, please download it. How many of you installed this Scilab already? Yes. Have you installed Scilab? 
please i request all of you please scilab.org you can go there download it i'll share my screen is it possible for us to work in uh, online no actually you know if you are going for the online platform you cannot execute all the comments still we could not find a good online resources for this uh, scilab but like kokel is it possible kokel yeah 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 others please go there scilab.org so you can download scilab 6.1.1 this is the latest version you can go there and download it so either 64 bits windows or windows 32 bits so you can download and get it installed so meanwhile uh, i'll be uh, giving the introduction about the scilab okay so you can download it till then we shall see something okay so we are all very good at the, the matlab uh, three days before dr manivanan was uh, demonstrating the concepts of uh, differential equation through simulation using the matlab so matlab is always very good you know this but the thing matlab you know the matrix laboratory so if you ask me why matlab of course make our work easier that's a reason that we have a matlab of course matlab is also the powerful to the usage of matlab you can we can compute the mathematical computation modeling simulation and then analyzing the data and uh, processing it okay and of course visualizing any kind of uh, graphs and then if you want to demonstrate or if you want to create an algorithm this matlab tool would be useful for you you know this is what uh, dr manivanan was explaining about the matlab just i'm telling about the matlab and then let me come back to the scilab because since most of you are downloading the scilab for 5 to 3 minutes 3 to 5 minutes i'll be giving some introduction about the matlab and scilab okay so matlab the matrix laboratory so you know it makes us easier our work okay it helps us to uh, do our work easy way okay the lot of usages you know this and of course the many researchers student fraternities are using this matlab and if you look at the matlab how many windows are there anybody any how many windows are there at matlab it would be just interacting session and then we will demonstrate the concepts i may be wrong you may be correct it doesn't matter just we are going to sharing our knowledge to enrich enrich our knowledge yes so it depends on how many windows we want to dock yeah usually how many windows would be there a console window will be there a variable yeah. browser will be there yes then yes. command command history will be there yes yes good and uh, many yes. more we can do yes yes all together if you look at it the eight windows would be there okay eight windows would be there you know the workspace editor window and then command window and then the directory get okay, directory the history and then help window that is also one of the window whatever if you need anything to know about any particular thing so help window is there and then figure window command history and then uh, you know launch pad window so all the toolbox so these are the eight uh, uh, windows are there okay at uh, matlab you know uh, here we need to suppose if you are making any function you need to define a variable right you need to define a suppose you are making a function where you need to define your variable but here coming back to scilab and of course your matlab is really really you know uh, expensive and uh, you know since though we have a student version you have uh, some limited resources are there to use it okay but if you want to more toolbox okay for your research or something and it is really expensive and people were trying to find you know is there any alternative way is there to make anything to or to mimic the matlab to make a you know uh, free resources they have introduced scilab science laboratory okay scilab 
science sorry scientific laboratory sci lab is the scientific laboratory it is also almost same way mimics how the math lab works okay sci lab can also be called as the alternative resources of the math lab fine and the same thing only few things uh, are vary and apart from that almost everything is similar to the math lab and if you are really working at the math lab this sci lab would be very very easy because before i was coming to that uh, webinar i was not knowing about this sci lab but once i read some of the books and some of the you know articles i understood that the sci lab is the alternative resources of the math lab and of course all everything is similar to the how it is defined at math lab only few things are different and one, once you understand them you can also work at the sci lab okay so this is also this sci lab also helpful for math computing modeling simulation analyzing the data and then visualization of the functions and creating the algorithm okay algorithm development also it helps okay the same way we can also a lot of windows are there we can have a workspace editor window command window okay and look at this if you look at this is the uh, the this is the matlab window okay this is the editor window command window and then workspace okay directory current space directory everything would be there so if you look at the the command uh, scilab so this is the the command window and we need to create the editor window here to create any program okay editor window and then this free workspace everything would be there so this is and if you look at this uh, console command window you can have in this aspects this is double you know this notation would be there at your matlab this is called a prompt the same way at the sci lab it is denoted like this this arrow this is the prompt at the console okay and at r console r studio r is for the statistics where you can have this symbol okay. so and this uh, of course at uh, matlab also whatever the entry you are entering that is viewed as an array isn't it that viewed as an array here also in uh, sci lab also the entries are also viewed as an array okay only thing is here at sci lab it won't bother about the dimension but uh, at uh, matlab it bothers the dimension and here suppose if you are making a, uh, any variable you need to declare the variable at your matlab at matlab we need to declare the variable okay we need to declare the variable so matlab we need to declare the variable suppose if you are using any any function you need to declare symbolic expression sim6 and there is at the sci lab no need to declare the variable immediately you can use the function okay and uh, suppose here you want to comment something if you want to hide any comment here we will be using the percentage symbol whereas here double slash we will be using double slash we will be using okay but this sci lab is uh, maximum used by the french people and like how we have isro the same way French National Space Agency is there at the French, who's the, they are the developer of it, of it, and they are utilizing it right from 1990. Okay. And uh, and did you download the Scilab? How many of you downloaded and get installed so that we can go for it, demonstrating the concepts. We shall go for it. Still, you are doing. Hello. Can I get your response? Okay, fine. Till then, I'll talk. Once you talk, I'll stop talk and demonstrating the concepts. Okay. So once at the work at the MATLAB window, and uh, you know, suppose if you are using WHO, it will declare all the variables. What are the variables that you have used? That is a WHO. And if you are using the command WHO yes who's okay, and this will give the all the variable and its dimension. even for clearing the variable we will be using the clear command clear all or specifically mention this is the variable that i am going to clear you can use this clear and clearing the screen clear clc okay so these are the things we will be using at matlab in the same way at scilab also whatever the variable that you have used that you want to see that what variable has been used uh, you know before previously so who can be used And if you want to find it out the dimension of the scilab who can be used 
and of course clear all clc everything can be used clc and clear all suppose you have figure that figure you want to clear it okay figure window so where the syntax is clf okay clear figure at scilab clear figure this is we will be using it okay fine at present what we are using the scilab is the version is 6.1.1 this is the version that we are using okay okay so you can download the scilab in the scilab.org in the link you, you can download it i think uh, this introduction is uh, i think fine to us to know about this scilab now we shall demonstrate the concepts uh, in the scilab okay so here we will be doing the uh, demonstrating the concepts of the linear algebra through scilab so we know the linear algebra right linear algebra is the study of vectors and the linear equations so the first thing is uh, we will be dealing and how the system of linear equation can be built and after solving the system you can have the bunch of vector and with the bunch of vector what we can do we can, we can using the operation with our addition scalar multiplication to make a design and all the space you know that we can make a vector space and then we are bringing a lot of concepts okay but uh, in this uh, webinar we will be demonstrating some basic matrix matrix and then solving the system of linear equation by different uh, you know, upper triangle matrix lower triangle matrix and uh, and then uh, drawing the vectors okay determining the eigen value eigen vectors and uh, you know i'll be i'll be giving a clue that how a vector can be transformed through the transformation i'll give the clue you can demonstrate by yourself as an exercise and finally you know uh, how a figure can be uh, plotted for both uh, two dimension and three dimension this is what we will be demonstrating in this uh, next uh, one hour okay fine uh, all of you have downloaded the scilab shall we go for demonstrating the concepts yes okay so look at this so if you let me show my screen uh, i mean desktop So look at this this is what you will have once you install you can double click it where you can obtain this this is our console command history and variable already have uh, done something so now those variable who are stored here this variable okay and then you can see this okay and one more thing here you can also transform whatever the uh, command that you have created whatever the program that you made it at your matlab from you can also transform the matlab file to the scilab that option is also there okay so you can see that everything you can okay so application so here you can if you want to make a program so where you can use the sci notes and there you can make a program okay. so variable browser command is key file browser everything is there so look at this as i said matlab to scilab translator is also there okay. So if you look at this and whatever the file you have that you can bring and you can convert it okay fine so look at this this is the r console okay this is sorry i'm sorry scilab console so here the console is denoted look at this this symbol okay arrow this is called prompt okay at matlab you can have double greater than or equal to that symbol greater than sorry greater than symbol at uh, r console you can have greater than symbol this is how the console is defined okay. okay now if we need to see this okay so i have used all the variables suppose let use x is equal to 10 okay. and then y is equal to 15 i made it x plus y if you enter it you can get it you can you view or look this console as the calculator so now i want to see this here how many variable i used the x y is x plus y these are x y these are the two variable that are used i want to see what are the variable of being used so w h o you can see this and you can find it out what are the variable are used so far you can get all the information so 
previously what are the variable i've used or everything we can get it suppose i want to find it out the variable dimension wh os os so you can get it what are the variable that are used and everything we can obtain the dimension and everything that we can obtain okay. w h o s so clear i want to clear everything clear so now look at this i have cleared all the variable now you can see at the variable browser could you find any variable yes could you find any variable we could not find any variable all the variables are clear okay fine clc also you can use clear command can also be used suppose here i want to clear this pane so clear all it's so a clear in the sense it will clear all the variable which are used already now i want to clear the screen so if you are using clc it will clear so you can see this it will clear the screen okay fine it will clear the screen understand so now let us do some operation let us uh, do some, let us create an vector okay. let me create a vector a is equal to 1 15 18 19 20 and 13 4 this is the vector that i have created look at this and at here at scilab the array would be end with a dot okay one point 15 point like this okay. now here i want to find it out the position of 9 sorry 19 so 1 2 3 4 the fourth question i want to find it out okay consider this is the mark of the student i want to find it out this particular student's mark so a this is stored as a okay this equivalent symbol is nothing but assigning so this values are assigned as a okay if you want to find it out the fourth position then 19 okay so sum of a sum of a so you can also demonstrate along with me so that you can understand this nothing very simple once you understand the basic and then from this you can generate the entire thing okay yes fine as a basis you know that vector space you have you will be taking some set of vectors with the set of vectors how we are generating the entire space like this this within this one and a half power would be the basis to all of you to to get to uh, the entire scilab okay fine thank you and then if you want to find it out the mean of a the same thing and if you look at your r matlab and scilab everything are interrelated to each other with the only few things are different okay that you need to understand this so mean of a so mean of a you can find it out and then length length of a okay length of a so length is the, the cardinality of the set is 7 okay and then maximum of a minimum of a that you can find it out maximum of a and minimum of a all the concepts you can demonstrate it here okay suppose the product of a p r o d okay product of a product of a and then look at this this one the sine of a so sine of a here the, this is nothing but the thresholding concepts and uh, the, the people who are working at the neural network where they can have the thresholding if the values are positive it will be assigned one if it is negative it will be assigned as zero if it is negative it will be assigned zero so sine of a so this is also you can find it out. similarly if we have you know some fractional values are there how you, we can find it out the flora and then ceiling rounding that is also possible so you can also take something some vectors some set of vectors with the fractional values okay so 6.7 pi and then 10.3 uh, 3.7 uh, 8.8 and then uh, 2. Okay, this is the vector that I have taken. So, if you want to fix, okay, so fix. So, look at this. If you using this command, what happened? Okay, so this is rounding up to closer to this fixing p, and then floor p. If you do this floor up, floor p. So, fixing p, floor p is same. Okay, and ceiling, the ceil. and then you can also round p this concepts round of p sorry 
R O U N D. It is a case sensitive round P. Okay. Suppose if you want to find the, the decrease order, ascending order, everything is possible. That you can learn it and you can work it out. Okay, fine. Okay. Are you doing this along with me? Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you. And here also you can demonstrate the, the arithmetic operation. So plus, minus, multiplication. And suppose this is the element I have taken. Okay, x is equal to uh, 1, 2, 4, 5. Okay, and this is the vector. And y is equal to another 1. Uh, 2, 3, 7, 6. Okay, and if you are using the semicolon, and if you want to suppress the output, if you type y, you know, it will print the output. The same thing what we have done at the last time. So if you add these two vectors, x plus y, okay, and then x minus y, you can do this. Suppose I want to square this x. So what is that? You can use x this 2, square 2. OK. And then this also works, x double star. x double star, suppose I want to square this, x double star. So now look at this x double star y. X. Okay. okay, fine. So you can demonstrate this arithmetic operation. Okay. So here, no need to define your variable at your MATLAB that you can understand. And the double slash, this double slash is the what is that? Commenting the, the comments. So if you want to hide the comment, you can use this double slash, whereas at the MATLAB, we will be using the percentile symbol. Okay. And here, one more thing that I would like to tell you. So, uh, yes. Yes. Now look at this. This is the addition, subtraction, multiplication. Suppose the right division that we need to find it out. X right slash. This is X Y inverse. Suppose you solve the system where you can use this slash. Left division is x, x in sub y. Okay, the power, the symbol we, we will be using, x double star. That is also used as a power. And you know certain variable and at uh, scilab the certain variables are used. Okay, suppose if you are using the pi in MATLAB, you just type pi. That's fine. Pi, Greek letter pi. But here before the certain variable, we will be using the percentile symbol. So you can see this i is the imaginary unit where you will be in the scilab we will be using percentile symbol and phi could be used as a percentile phi similarly okay all the uh, variables are used the defined predefined variables are used uh, before the uh, predefined variable we will be using the percentile symbol whereas at the matlab if you are using the percentile it hide the output comment the output comment the output so that you need to understand. That's what I would like to tell you here. Okay, fine. Now, let us create a, the matrix. So with the matrix, what are the things that we can do? And then uh, we will also uh, finding the eigenvalue, eigenvectors, and solving the system by the, by the you know, row Eklund form, uh, uh, sorry, Gaussian Jordan method, and then um, LU factorization method, and plotting the vectors. So these are the things that we will see another half an hour okay fine so you create a vector how would you create a vector i mean how will you create a matrix three by three matrix we just want to create a three by three matrix okay suppose this is the matrix that i want to create the first row is one one minus two semicolon it will break the first row and second row is minus one two one okay and then zero one minus one this is the matrix that i've created so you can see this a is the matrix the matrix a is created the same way how we have uh, done at the matlab okay you have done a matrix okay so another matrix let me create b similarly you can create another matrix one two one six minus one zero 
minus one, minus two, and minus one. This is another matrix. Now you can add these two matrix, A plus B, A plus B, and then A minus B. Also, we can do this. A minus B, and then multiplying these two matrix, A star B. Multiplying these two matrix, okay. These are the things. What are the the matrix operation that you have learned? Everything you can demonstrate at the end. Suppose before this arithmetic operation, if I use the dot. A dot plus B. Next picture. Okay. Okay. So for uh, multiplication, division, you know, power, if you are using the dot, this dot indicates the element-wise multiplication. So it won't do the I'm sorry. I got a call from the Kerala number. I was thinking that it was from the organizer. Usually, I won't pick up the call. Since uh, it is from the Kerala, I was thinking that it, uh, it was from the, the organizer. I'm sorry. Okay. So for this is A, A star B is the the matrix multiplication. If you're doing this before the multiplication star dot, the element-wise matrix would be done. So so what is that here? One one star. And one two zero minus two one zero like this. Okay, element wise multiplication. Similarly, you can also do the the element wise the operations. Okay, element wise multiplication. So look at this a dot square. So here this element a is being square. Element wise squared. And if you are using this a square, what will happen? This is the matrix multiplication a dot a. This is a dot a. A dot A. So whereas this A dot A, this A dot square is the element-wise operation is performed. Okay, that you need to remember here. Okay, fine. Okay. So here, suppose at the matrix, I want to, what is that? Uh, delete the first row. I I want to get this first row. Okay, I want to get the first row of the matrix. So what is the command that I can use it? Okay, suppose this is I want to extract from this matrix first row. So A of the matrix is stored as A. A of okay. First row I need okay. one comma colon. If you are using this, I'll be getting the the first row of the entry. First row of the matrix. One one minus two. Okay, one one minus two. You can see this. Suppose I need the first column. So how do you make it? Colon. E comma colon. One. Comma yeah. one. Yes, thank you. Good. So one minus one zero. You can extract the thing. Okay. Similarly, for any particular thing, suppose you have a large data, you have. So how you can view this operation? Suppose you have a large data, you are imported the data in the R uh, style app. So where you want to extract the uh, particular person marks? Okay. So where A colon comma that particular person name? If you do that or registration number, you do that. You will be extracting that particular. Okay, so for that you can use this command. Good, fine. Suppose you want to find it out the the again this location two comma three location what it is there two comma three second row and third column entry also can be done. So these are the things you can understand once you make a program. Suppose if you are making a program for Gaussian elimination, Gaussian Method. This would be useful. Suppose the particular row where you are applying the elementary row operation. So elementary row operation. We know this. I'll be going there while I'll be taking uh, the solving the gas yoda method. Okay. So and then determinant of a. Everything. What are the things that you have, you have learned? So determinant of a. 
Okay, so the command is dict d e t dict dict of a determinant of the a determinant of. So a is the non-singular matrix. Okay, okay, fine. A is the non-singular matrix. If you look at look at this this, if you view this a, where is your matrix a? Yeah, this is your matrix a. One minus one zero one two one minus two one minus one. Delete form a basis. So you are you are given a three vectors you are taken from uh, R cube. Okay, that vector is written as the column vector, and then you are asked to check whether it forms basis. I mean, linearly independent or not? Whether they are linearly independent or not? So by taking the determinant of the uh, what is that called uh, matrix of the vector is non-singular, you can say that it is the uh, linearly independent. Okay. So, like that, you can also do that. What you're creating a program, this is, can also be, you know, used. So, in matrix would be your input, and then if determinant of A is uh, non-zero, not equal to zero, then A is the the given matrix is the uh, the given set of vectors or matrix anything. The given set of vector is the uh, uh, linearly independent. Else, dependent. Like this, you can make a program. Okay, and then the rank of the matrix. Rank of A. Okay. So, why do we need this rank? Anyone? Can anyone tell me why do we need this rank of the matrix? So why do we need to find it out this rank of the matrix? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. Suppose you have a, a system with a more variables. Okay. So more, you know, system with the uh, four yeah, n equations, three variables are there. So we are determining whether the system will have a solution or not. So where this rank would be really useful for us. So we will be, you know, making the given system as an augmented matrix. We will be looking whether the rank of the augmented matrix is equal to the rank of the uh, uh, coefficient matrix. If this is equal to number of the column variable. Then the system is consistent. I mean, the system is a unique solution. Okay. To determine whether the system has the unique solution or in Many solution, no solution. This rank is really, really helpful for us. Also, to determine how many linearly independent vectors are there, for that, this rank concept are very well used. Okay, fine. Okay, so inverse of the matrix. So the syntax is I and B. Okay, inverse of the matrix is I and B out here. So here previously we have taken the matrix A. From this we are demonstrating all the things: a square and the multiplication, element-wise operation, extracting rows and columns, or finding the location of an element. Okay, and then determinant of A, rank of A, everything inverse of A, and then A dash. A dash. This is for the transpose of A. Okay, A dash. A dash would be the the transpose of A. Fine. A dash would be the The transpose of B. Okay. So, is inverse exists for a uh, non? What is it? Rectangular matrix. Anybody? For rectangular matrix, inverse exists. No, sir. Only for square matrix. Only for square matrix. So, let me take this A. Okay. One, two. What is the inverse? Inverse of the matrix. Anybody? Two. Zero one. This is the rectangular matrix that I am taking. Okay. Can you find the inverse of it? So actually, what is the inverse actually? How do you find the inverse? Inverse of the matrix. Okay. So let consider okay. a. Let us take a b and a. M by n matrix. Okay. For a by for a is an M by n matrix. Okay. So b is the n by m matrix. Is called the Left inverse, yeah, left inverse. In the sense, left inverse of A if uh, B A is equal to I N, B A is equal to I N. Okay, and C is N by M is called uh, right inverse. Uh, right inverse of A, if A C is equal to I I M, A C is equal to I M. Okay, 
so this is you know already we have seen if a for a b is the inverse of the matrix then a b is equal to identity and b is equal to a this is what we have learned okay for square matrix this is possible for rectangular matrix we are able to find it out what is it the partial inverse okay we can find the the partial inverse okay we can find it out the partial inverse so for rectangular matrix also we can have either left inverse is there or right inverse okay so that we need to understand okay this is for the your information if you look at the linear algebra jin ko kwan uh, in that book uh, you would explain uh, this uh, uh, left inverse and the right inverse okay so let me take this matrix a okay a is your matrix okay i want to find it out the inverse of this okay so if i use this command i and b of a okay does not exist because the square matrix it's not a square matrix okay and if i use p i and b of a okay the partial inverse of the matrix so you can have the partial inverse okay so this is the the inverse of a okay this is the the inverse of your a okay if you multiply p and this answer okay what is it uh, answer dot a so okay so let me take this matrix a is taken okay, this is your a and b is another matrix that i'll be taking this is as 1 minus 3 minus 1 5 and then minus 2 7 okay this is your b and if you do this multiplication b star a or a star b a star yeah sorry i a star b i'm sorry a star b is 1 0 0 we are getting the identity matrix therefore b is the inverse of a okay 1 minus 3 minus 1 5 minus 2 7 would be the inverse of this so here left inverse exist look at this whereas right inverse sorry left inverse this uh, yeah right inverse exist left inverse what we obtain we are not getting the identity so therefore left inverse is possible okay so for any for any uh, rectangular matrix we can try to find the inverse right okay so the partial inverse you can find it out this p and p i and b of a this you can remember it okay fine and also all the thing you can demonstrate here the trace of a diagonals of a upper triangle matrix of a okay so that you can do this suppose here i want to find it out the di suppose i'll call the whole matrix a so because here i've stored this rectangular matrix as also a so let me take this is a okay here i want to find it out the diagonal of a diagonal of a d i g of a diagonal of a okay and then what is that mm, what you can do trace of a also you can do this trace of a get some of the the diagonals main diagonals and then the upper triangle matrix t r i l okay lower triangle so look at this here the syntax is triangular lower l lower triangular of a okay this is the syntax lower triangular of a similarly try u okay try u upper triangular okay this is how you can remember the syntax a yeah, triangular u upper triangular so we cannot uh, remember everything okay so this is a way you can remember it okay okay fine okay so if you want to find it out the identity matrix of the order 3 this is also same syntax same syntax how we are utilizing at your matlab e y e okay 3 by 3 3 comma 3 at matlab if you are using i e it will work Whereas here you have to give i three comma three. This is we need to remember it. Identity matrix of n. If you are giving, you will be getting the identity matrix. Whereas here at scilab i three comma three. Okay. So suppose you need a once the full of ones of the matrix of order three by three. Okay. Ones of three. Suppose the order of three by two. So you can get it. Three rows and two columns full of ones. Okay. And zeros. Full of zero matrix, null matrix. You need with the order of three comma four. 
zeros 3 comma 4 yes okay so the randomly if you want to generate a matrix that is also you can the so random of two matrix so matrix of order uh, 2 comma 4 random of the matrix so randomly you can generate this matrix that is also possible okay okay fine now we shall do uh, creating a vectors okay first uh, we shall uh, do the dot product cross product and then find the normalizing the vectors and then we will uh, plot a vectors and then uh, we will go for the the eigen value eigen vector concepts and then solving the system uh, by the what is that gaussian elimination method row reduced circular form okay finally we uh, learn how to plot a graphs in a two dimension and three dimension this is we shall learn it okay fine so what is a dot product a is your vector a is this is the vector that i will i'll be taking the so a we have one two four okay this is vector a and the b vector is 2 3 minus 1 okay so how do you make a dot product here a dot star b a a dot star b okay dot product that is also yes good fine dot star b this is also possible or a star b dash right a star b B dash. This is the dot product you will be getting, and if you want to find it out, the dot product, inner products, you will be getting the real value. Too. So you will be taking the vectors in the space, do the dot product, it will give the real value. Too. Okay. So this is the element-wise product here. The dot product would be a into b transpose. Okay. A one into b one, a two into b two, a three into b three. Okay. So a da a dot b da b dash a into b dash the dot product. Okay, before we go for the inner product space, at the vector space, this inner product is defined and holds certain things, then you can call them that the vector space is the inner product space, right? Okay, so here, these two vector, how we can make a cross product, okay? It's a cross product. Consider this is the vector, i, i, 1i, 2j plus 4k, similarly 2i, 3j minus 4k, minus 1k. So here, the cross product is cross, of a comma b cross the cross product okay and uh, you know the normalization to find it out the length of the vector okay how would you find the length of the vector yes normalization modulus, modulus okay. yeah in any day the people who are doing a data analysis you have a data after uh, you know uh, cleaning the data you will normalizing the data right why do we need to normalize the data anybody why do we need to normalize the data as i said you should not learn the tool you should also learn behind uh, the concepts that you are using you should learn it then only you can appreciate everything so why do we need to normalize the thing in order to bring them into particular range isn't it if you have the data with the you know the time uh, the range would be vary for all the variables if you are taking with the different range and it is really difficult for you to compute so what you can do you can bring all the variable into particular common uh, range okay common range therefore we are doing the the normalization okay so if you do the norm of a you would be getting the what is the norm? What is the norm? This is the vector you have. So 1i, 2j plus 4j. What is the norm? Yeah. What is the difference between norm and uh, mod? Yes. What is the difference between norm and mo mod? Norm and modulus. Under root of a dot a. What is it? No, no. I'm just asking the the difference between modulus and norm. Yes. 
doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong sometimes i may also be wrong so that i can also learn i always believe that you know we can always Not learn we learn to learn something yeah yeah that's what Now, modulus both will give right what is the difference modulus will also give the length but norm you are you are absolutely right vector what about uh, norm modulus norm is defined for vector modulus is for scalar right? yeah that's it good that's it yeah so though it is a simple but we may not aware that okay everything begins from the simple okay if you are good at it anything you can bring it that's the reason i post that question okay thank you friend my dear friend uh, for your interest okay suppose the length of the vector c uh, i mean uh, the normalization here we are doing the normalization after finding the length what is it all the vector would be divided by its length so 1 comma 2 comma 3 is divided by what is it norm of a norm of a if you do this the normalization is being done previously what you had so look at this the vector what you have taken 1 to 4 this is with the range of something 1 to 5 okay here you simple what is that uh, here you have taken a, a, a three dimension vector if you are taking the large vector okay large dimension vector then it is really difficult for you to uh, what is that uh, calculate so we can do the the normalization to bring them into the particular interval look at this it is brought into the interval of 0 to 1 the normalization that you can also do this okay fine now let us draw the graph let us draw the vector okay two dimension plotting a two dimension vector okay in matlab we are using the syntax plot okay so here you suppose if you are plotting a something so what we have to do you need to generate the vector okay the i mean suppose this is the uh, some graph i want to plot so what are the thing you need you need x coordinates okay the x coordinates the points on the x coordinates is defined in two perspective in the in matlab one is a colon b colon b okay this is the starting and ending point starting and ending point between them what is the increment suppose some increment you are keeping okay c is the increment okay a would be the starting point starting and ending okay starting and ending this one way we will be generating a point another way suppose if you are taking a point the point should be linearly spaced another one the same syntax what we have used in matlab lin space a lin space a comma b okay and how many points you need between this a and b that you can mention it these are the two we will be using one one is something logarithmic space something is there okay that also you can use it okay these are the two ways at matlab if you want to generate a points in the x coordinates we will be doing this the same syntax is also applicable for your scilab as well okay after doing this x is created and then you will be bringing your function something your function is x square okay here the element wise operation need to be performed all the elements of your x would be substituted at your y therefore here we will be doing the dot product i mean sorry element wise operation element wise operation will be performed okay element wise operation will be performed fine and then plot x comma y this is the syntax we will be using plot x comma y okay and then what are the to make your graph is pretty you will be using the different color red color is for r green g okay the first letter of the word would be used x for blue and black what we are doing for blue is b black for k okay and then the line of the graph so what is it if you need the dotted line and star line so all the information we will be using it so that so before we plot this for uh, sometimes you know we are they are also using plot 2d two dimension okay two dimension and three dimension as well they are using plot 3d and where we need to do what is that for three dimension we need to create x and y coordinates as well okay we need to define and then your function and then plot it okay so before we plot the figure let us focus on how we can plot a two dimension vector that let's see this suppose this is the vector just i want to create so look at this suppose in two dimension i want to create this vector suppose uh, this is the vector 
uh, let me take this is 5 this is 4 5 comma 4 5 comma 4 this is the vector i want to create how we can plot it okay so what is it this point is 0 comma 0 this is your a this is b is 5 comma 4 how we can make it so what is that here the first point is uh, what is it let me take a is 0 comma 0 and another point b is 5 comma 4 okay and uh, these two is going to be combined so z is equal to so we are writing them as a uh, column vector a dash b dash so we are going to plot this plot okay z of okay so this is nothing but the row right the first vector z of the second vector plot 2d so you can use this syntax so let us write this as a program okay so you can go to edit yeah applications so where you can have a sign notes where you can open this okay this is already here so you will be getting this kind of window this is the editor window where you can make a program and this can be editable whereas that your command window cannot be edited okay. that acts as a calculator okay so here we want to uh, what is the depict this one what is that let me take this point a is equal to what is the point 0 comma 0 right 0 comma 0 and then b would be and b is equal to uh, 5 comma 4 z is equal to a dash b dash that 2d two dimensional plot set of second vector so you can run this this is the the run button save and execute so you can see this you can okay this is the vector you will be getting suppose if you want to transform this vector i'll leave it this as a, a task to you suppose this is the vector you want to project in the uh, x coordinates or y coordinates how you can do this to project this what is that syntax hello i mean uh, what is the the transformation we will be using a is one zero 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 using this matrix this vector can be projected in the x coordinates similarly at your y coordinates for the situation how will you make uh, the graph that you can think and make it now i'll give this you can try suppose instead of this two vectors are there okay can you do this this two i'll give two minutes to all of you so this is the vector you can draw okay so this will be what is it this is uh, let me take uh, five. Yeah, this is five comma two. So this is three, three comma four. Okay, so three comma four. Okay, so this is O, A, and B. Can you draw this? Can you draw this? Even you can also label it. So what is it? This is X label. What is it? Something you can X coordinates, Y label, Y coordinates. Like this, you also you can make it. Can you plot it? I request all of you, please demonstrate this. So first, what we have to do? You have to create a. So this is O is zero comma zero. So first, you need to call the point O is zero zero. You need to, and the A is five comma two, and B is three comma four. And then you have to, you are drawing from O dash to B dash, and then O dash to A a dash okay so z is equal to o dash to b dash o dash to a dash 
and then plot two comma d and two vectors we need to plot z of one comma colon z of two colon yes will you be able to do Yes. How many of you doing this? Okay, let us try this. So, yeah. So here a is zero. Yeah. Let me take o is zero comma zero, and then. A is what is it? Five comma two, and then B is three comma four, and then Z is O dash to A dash, and then again O dash to B dash. Fine. Plot. Let's see this. Look at this. Already you had uh, this line. What is it? This is pi comma. What is it? Pi comma four. In the same figure in itself, these two vector is appeared. So to clear the previous figure, what is the command that you can use? Anybody? 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 I told you right. Anyone? CLF. Yes, CLF should be used. Good. So CLF, if you have used, you can see that. Okay, this vector you will get. Now you can take some uh, rectangle or triangle and draw this. Suppose this is the rectangle you want to draw. Okay. Some image, something. Okay. So this you can draw this or uh, triangle. Let me take. So you can plot some point. What is this? This may be uh, two comma four. This is three comma two, and this will be four comma four. This is three comma uh, four six. So can I plot this? This one. Similarly, this. This triangle. You can plot something. You can assign a vector and do this. This is A, B, C, D. Okay. You can plot and see this. Okay. And uh, next, what you can do, you try to transform this. If you transform this uh, through, you know, through this, uh, let me take the matrix C is equal to one zero zero zero. If you transform these two vectors, what will happen? It will lie in the x coordinates. Similarly. Zero 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 one zero. This will, if you transform, it will lie over there. So you can think and try to make a program for it. Okay. So this also you can make it after taking all the points and z is equal to you know how we are going to move from a to a dash to d dash and d dash to c dash and c dash to b dash and b dash to a dash. Like this you will be making. Okay. And then this is a two dimension plot two comma d. So look at this. All the points will be no, first will be done. So plot z of you know what you have done everything as a matrix you have made it everything as a matrix and then what is that you are plotting the first point and then second point so very simple are you making will you how many of you are getting this this figure is anyone have you got it then. Can I get your response? Are you doing, or do you want me to try? You can do right. 
say yes or no otherwise we shall go for 20 minutes is there we shall go for another one another things solving the system and then plotting the graphs okay fine let me leave it this uh, as a task to all of you so you can try okay so fine so and one more thing here i have added that if you transform through this matrix or something okay if you want to project uh, x coordinates or uh, project in the second quadrant first quadrant so how, what, how, what the shape this would be so i assume this some image some image is there if you transform into some other form how this would be okay that you can think it over and do as the task okay thank you now let's see the the eigen value eigen vectors okay eigen value and eigen vectors okay so eigen value eigen vector you know this eigen value can anyone what is eigen value eigen vector okay so this is the problem you will be learning a is the square matrix x is a vector will be a lambda is a scalar if you are getting this a x is a lambda x then this is viewed as eigen value problem the actual the graphical representation is x is suppose this is a 2 by 2 matrix okay this is what is that 2 by 1 matrix okay suppose this is the vector i will be taking okay some vector this is your vector x okay and if you transform this vector through this matrix okay that should be lambda times of x okay this should be the lambda times of x if lambda is positive then it would be stretched this side and if lambda is negative negative then what will happen it pull down to the side okay this is minus lambda of x so this is the eigen value problem in matlab if you want to find out the eigen value of this matrix here we will be using the syntax is called eig of a okay eig of a okay so i the this is the eigen value suppose if you want to find it out the eigen vector this would be ig of a something c comma d you will be taking c gives the eigen value okay and whose corresponding eigen vector will be getting eigen vector this is we will be using for the the matlab and now this will be at the scilab we shall see this the syntax is we will be using the the spectrum spectrum of uh, spectrum you know this what is spectrum anybody yes graphic people would be using spectrum graphic spectral graphic yes okay so here we will be using the syntax for the eigen value eigen vector at the scilab is scilab is c of a spec of a okay the eigen vector is c comma d spec of a you will be getting the eigen va value and eigen vector so let us demonstrate this okay so let me take a is this is the matrix i'll be taking the previously what we have taken this is our matrix a and if you want to find it out the eigen value of this, sorry if you are using eig of a look at this what we are getting undefined variable so such a uh, thing syntax has not been defined at the scilab so what is that spec spec of a spec of a okay so you can see this 2 1 minus 1 are the eigen values for the matrix okay eigen values for the matrix so if you are using something c comma d this is spec of a So you can see this two one minus one the diagonal terms or the eigen value, whereas the corresponding eigen vector zero point three zero point nine zero point three would be the eigen value for uh, two zero point zero point five zero point two would be the eigen value for eigen vector for one similarly zero point seven five point six zero point seven would be the eigen value eigen vector for minus one. Okay. So eigen value eigen vector also you can demonstrate. and here also you can also view the eigen vector okay so using the plot command you can try it let me leave it to you you can try to debit this eigen vector okay so eigen vector also you can give it now let's see this solving the system okay suppose you have the system of linear equation ax is equal to b so how this can be solved in lower classes we have approached many method of solving the system So, by say, what is the elimination method, Cramer's rule, inverse methods? 
so much of method that we have used and then gas in elimination gas load on and then uh, what is it lu factorization method also we will be dealing the system ax is equal to b okay solving the system so if b is in the column space of a then the system as a solution if b does not in the column space you can the system is inconsistent you do not have a solution in this situation we will go for the the least square method least square solution that is also possible okay the least square method is there qr factorization is there that is also the interested people you can work it out yeah it is there you can also see this so here let us see the this the solving the system we will be dealing through a uh, gas jordan method okay gas jordan method you can see this and then inverse method okay so let me take a very simple problem how we can make a program for it look at this let me take uh, this two linear equation with the two variable x1 plus 5x2 7 minus 2x1 minus 7x2 minus 5 this is the system we will be taking so at gas jordan method what we will be doing you will be taking the the coefficient vary uh, the coefficient matrix 1 5 -2 -7 and bi b would be 7 -5 so you will be taking the augmented matrix okay and then what is that this would be reduced into the row echelon form 7 -5 so what is it this will be reduced into the row echelon form by applying the all the elementary operation so elementary operation we know this so you can interchange any two rows uh, what is the multiply then throw out a row add a non zero constant to any row okay so these are the three row operation we have similarly we can also have the column operation you can use either rows or column operation if you are applying this this matrix can be reduced into the row reduced echelon form and then you know you will be getting the okay fine so here what is that here suppose you do not know how to do the program suppose what we have done the manually that can also be done as a program so look at this here you got a leading one we blow the leading one you need to make it zero so what row operation we can perform at r2 you can perform r2 plus 2 times of r1 okay this operation you can perform and then and this become 157 this is zero this is what will happen uh, minus 7 5 2 10 3 this is um, this is what is it Uh, this is, becomes nine, and you go, and then this we need to below the leading one. You made it this entry is zero. You need to make it this is one. So at R two, R two is divided by three. This operation we have performed, and then what is that? This is one five seven zero one. This is three, and then below the leading above the leading entry we need to make it zero. To make it this is zero, what we shall do? R one minus five times of Uh, R two, so we will be getting this system. What is that? One zero. Uh, this is uh, minus eight. This is zero one three. So the system would be x one is minus eight, y is three. So x one is minus eight, y is three. This is the solution of the system. So whatever I've done the manually, how this can be written as a program in in your uh, uh, what is that R console? So now we have uh, for this. reduce row echelon form right we have made the augmented matrix r r e f this itself will give everything but those days before we are making this syntax reduce row echelon form so they have done it manually how this problem can be solved manually so that we will see that okay okay first let me is it here okay fine so look at this a is the Coefficient matrix one five minus two minus seven. B is the the constant seven minus five, and write them as an augmented matrix. C is the augmented matrix. Now, what is that the row, row operation that we have performed? Okay, display. So that we need to display R two. This is equal to R two plus two R one. So what is that? In the center, entire row two, the matrix C is the augmented matrix. Okay, in the row two, we will be using this operation. Okay, row two. Plus two times of row one. Okay, so how I am making now? What you are writing the program already? What we are extracting the R one, row one, and row two. We have utilized right this syntax. This so we are using. So R two is second row. So C is nothing but the second row of the matrix. Second row of the matrix. So second row is added with the two times of the first row. So this 
KC. And then R2 is divided by 3. Okay, the entire. So, how I'm making this? So, look at this. Second row is second row is divided by 3. This place C. And third one, second row, first row is subtracted by 5 times of CB. Okay, if you do this, and finally, okay, so C of 1, 3. Okay, by C of 1, 1. And C of, now you can see this. So, print F, we are printing the solution. The solution is x1 is percentile d the same thing so whatever this x1 is up here that would be the will come over here this will come here okay let me run this so you can see at uh, console x the solution is what is that x1 is minus 8 x2 8 now look at this the first operation 157 suppose you want to see suppose if you want to see everything so I just eliminate this. Yeah. Now you can see everything. Yeah. So this is first time this operation is performed over here. This operation finally we are in the solution. Now the same thing we are going to demonstrate it with this command. Okay. So here A is let me take A is the coefficient matrix. Is, what is it? One, five. And then minus two, minus seven, okay. And your B is B is what is it? Seven colon minus five. Okay. Now we need to write the augmented matrix. So this would be C of C is equal to A B. Okay. So we have written the augmented matrix. Okay. This is the augmented matrix. Now we need to find it out the reduced row equivalent form of C. So look at this. What is the syntax? Reduced row equivalent form. Previously we have done it manually. What are the things that we have done that we have made it as a program and we have done? So reduced row equivalent form. So simply what you can make it after doing this reduced row equivalent form. If you do this, you can get the, the solution. X1 is equal to minus 8, x2 is equal to 3. This is the solution of the system. Okay. So another one, another way how you can do this, x is equal to, what is that? A backslash of B. Another way you can get the solution. Okay, x is equal to backslash of B. Okay. So this is the backslash, this is nothing but the inverse of A into B. Inverse of A into B. Okay. Minus 8 and 3. Okay. Fine. So these are the way you can solve the system. Okay. Suppose this A is the matrix you have. You want to express them as a lower and upper triangular matrix. How we can do this? This matrix can be expressed as a lower and upper triangular matrix. So here you can use it. L U. This is equal to what is that? The syntax is L U of A, lower and upper triangular matrix of your A. Lower. So look at this. This is lower. What happened? Something is getting okay, lower and upper triangular matrix. So interested people, you can also see this. So let me take this particular. Okay. Yes, lower and upper triangular matrix. Okay, so lower and upper triangular matrix. But, okay. So you can also solve the system using the lower and upper triangular matrix. Suppose you have the system to solve through the upper triangular matrix. How we can do this? Anybody? You will find the factorization. For a given a square matrix, you will find the LV factorization. And then solve lower triangular matrix uh, by equating your B so that you'll be getting some uh, solution for your Y. And then upper triangular matrix equate to your Y, you'll be getting your X. Okay, That you can also work it out. So you can make a program for... Uh, Solving the system by the LU factorization. Okay. Solving the system. System by LU factorization. Okay. LU factorization. So you have AX is equal to B. This is the system you have. The first thing what you have to do, you have to give the coefficient matrix should be factorized as a lower and upper triangular matrix. Second one is uh, you can solve it, uh, the lower triangular matrix by equating B so that you will be getting a Y and then you 
the upper triangular matrix uh, equated with your y to get your x okay by solving them you will be getting your the solution of the system so you can the program is there the, the syntax for this is x is equal to l u sol okay l u sol a comma b the syntax is so after some time you can do this l u sol a comma b if you do this you will be getting okay this is the the syntax for l u factorization okay so fine so the program which are also made already suppose you are given a some set of vector whether the set of vectors or linearly dependent or dependent okay all the properties you know this how you, one can determine the given set of vectors are linearly independent or dependent so you use those concepts and it make it and demonstrate whether they are linearly independent and dependent okay now let us demonstrate some simple graph for a two dimension and three dimension with that uh, let me wind up i'll be taking another 5 minutes for plotting a graph okay and then let me leave it to you uh, okay for questioning session for three minutes okay for two dimension plotting a two dimension as i said already for creating a uh, data points at your x coordinates you need to generate so either you can do using the colon a colon uh, increment colon b okay or lin space these two syntax that you can use for generating a vectors okay these two things you can do and after making this suppose you want to plot y is equal to x square you can do this okay and plot of x comma y okay that we shall see and then suppose uh, if you are using pi the, the domain is if you are using a sine function or cosine function if you are using minus 2 pi 2 2 pi where the pi before pi the percentage symbol should be there okay this is how at sci lab the variables pi something the variable epsilon okay uh, or define okay that you need to remember it so let us first draw this y is equal to x square okay so how we can do this let's see this okay okay let me take this some trigonometric function y is equal to cos x in sin x or first let me do this uh, parabolic parabola so x is equal to okay some some point from minus pi to pi here the increment is point 01 this is the increment i have taken okay and your the function is y is equal to x square so here the element wise operation need to be performed all the elements of your x should be substituted at your x square to get your y so therefore we are making this element wise operation now plot x comma y plot of x comma y if you do this yeah you can run this sorry comma is missing right plot x comma y so you can see this plot x comma y suppose if you want to the color of the graph something okay the line of the color of the graph is something you need you can also make it okay so you can make it okay a red color the start line you need so you can see this red color and start line so something dotted line you need so call and you can do it all the things what are the things that you have then at your math lab this is here also it is applicable so you can make everything even you can also make the label okay label label x coordinates y label x coordinates that you can make it okay another one suppose if you want to plot uh, this function something uh, cos x sin x and y cos x sin x everything i want to plot it in a single window so look at this where the domain is 0 to 2 pi the increment is pi by 16 so that is my x and here i want to plot cos x sin x and cos x plus sin x but in hello so here we are making like this and then plotting x comma y 
the title we are giving its title the title of the figure is something trigonometric function and this would be instead of labeling x coordinate i y coordinate separately you can also do or in a title itself this is possible okay suppose if you need a legend if you want to uh, what is it uh, identify the colors of the graph so first let us do this here suppose you need a grid okay the grid also you need okay okay so look at this here are three functions okay. so to check what color you want to give okay so here i'll be using the legend command cos x sin x cos x plus sin x okay in what position that you need that also you can fix it okay and in matlab you need a left corner or right corner where you need so here we are assigning the numbers so trigonometric function okay so this is one okay similarly suppose if you want to plot four different graph graphs in the subplot okay subplot so this is the graph you need you want to make it the subplot so how, how you can make it the subplot of 2 comma 2 comma 1 this is subplot of 2 comma 2 comma 2 subplot of 2 comma 2 comma 3 and 2 comma 2 comma 4 where you can bring the graphs whatever you we have done at matlab here also you can make it okay so the last one i'll make uh, yeah this function 1 by 1 plus x square that we can also demonstrate this you can see that this one i'll take this so here x is varies from minus 5 to 5 with the increment is 1 here the function is 1 upon 1 plus x square okay. so look at this the division before the division we are using element wise operation and then square this is the function that i we want to plot plot x comma y o dashed blue line okay and then x label okay if suppose if you need uh, the labeling should be in the form of the latex format So we see latex symbol dollar minus pi less than or equal to x x lies between minus pi to pi, and then the font size also you can fix it. The color you can also fix it like double quotation color. What color you need? Red color. Okay. And then y label is what is it? Y of x one upon one plus x square. Okay. The font size what you need? What kind of color you need? That also you can fix. Okay. And then title of the figure, the legend, the function. so since look at this previously the graph was there in the same graph itself it occurs so to avoid this you can clear the figure clear the, the figure which is there already clear function okay you can see this so 1 upon 1 plus x square okay. so you can also try 1 plus e pi f minus lambda x so the sigmoidal function you can try try to depict 1 upon 1 plus e pi minus x that function you can try okay and the last one let us uh, do the three dimension figure okay three dimension figure so the last one is the three dimension figure to plot x y square minus x cube this is we shall see this so with that uh, i think uh, we can find okay the last one so three dimension graph okay the surf command we can use or plot 3d that also will be work okay so here first you are creating your xy so x and y is from minus 1 to 1 okay x and y is are same instead of this i can also make it y is equal to x okay we need to we are making the mesh grid for xy coordinates and then bringing the function this is xy square minus x cube okay the three dimension is surf command surf x comma y comma z so the previous graph itself it is coming I mean, so clf you can see this the color map is also there so you can use the color map help command if you type help color map and you will get all the information about it okay so so the final one is if you need something help command you can use help color map will get all the information related to the color map color map okay in color map okay fine this is also you can use the same thing it is just mimic 
your uh, matlab role okay the color map you can use it, okay that uh, and then another one suppose the appropriate a p r o appropriate something some appropriate some keyword if you are giving where also you will get all the information okay, okay. you can see this else command you can use it from this you can determine everything okay to quit this if you type quit and it will close everything okay quit quit command you can use suppose you want to find it out the date of today the time everything time and define variable time what happened okay. so with that uh, let me wind up thank you so much for your uh, the patient listening and i hope this this uh, session would be the uh, giving a seed to all of you about the sci lab and from this you can definitely generate and you can learn many things about the sci lab and i really thank the organizer for providing this wonderful opportunity and uh, as i said initially i was also a new to this sci lab i was okay so just two days before i just started to learn this okay so within some uh, some 24 hours i was able to uh, learn this much without uh, uh, you know uh, anything definitely you definitely you can do and you can learn better than me and all the very best for your um, research thank you any questions i'm happy to answer i think it's 11 so, so one one thing i want to add over here yeah sir so, uh, while labeling the legend and all those stuff that can be done in the graphical window there is a edit yes. option at that time. yeah so yes, from yes, there instead yeah, of yeah. Yeah. Instead, instead of typing all those stuff yes, we yes, can sir. change and the different types of graph that you want dotted line solid line and all those stuff is right there so yeah, you can yeah. show it you can show it to the participant so that yes yes that is also possible and if you go to the uh, figure window where you can edit so what is that uh, everything is there okay. select current figure and then axis properties okay Figure properties. Yeah, yeah. Figure. Figure properties. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Others and any others. Can you share the cell number of your sir for further? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. My number is eight six zero, eight four six zero, eight six zero, eight four six zero seven six eight. Eight six zero. Yeah, I'll post it at the WhatsApp. I mean, here in the chat box. Eight six zero, eight four six zero seven six eight. Yes, sir. Previously, I was working on editing the window, but the uh, uh, MATLAB it would be fine. But here, I'm getting stuck. Okay. Anyhow, let me also try. You can also try, sir, for editing in the figure window itself. How we can, uh, you know, labeling it. Those days I've done. Not labor, but I just forget. Okay. Thank you. Let me also. Eight zero eight eight four six zero. Sir, I post it at our WhatsApp group. Eight six zero eight four six zero seven six eight. Okay. any other and i hope that something i have done okay so thank you so much so can, can you please share your ppts and all the stuff that you are having it will be helpful for us yeah 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 yes sir i'll, I'll uh, make it and give it uh, to ma'am parila ma'am parila ma'am will share to you okay thank you sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you sir thanks sir now ma request sir uh, yeah. shall we wind up the session with a note of thanks yeah yeah yes ma'am okay sir now we request mrs r preeta ma'am to deliver the vote of thanks over to you preeta ma'am thank you kartika ma'am 
I, on behalf of Organizing Committee of Panarayaman Institute of Technology, Satya Mangalam, and Providence College for Women, Gunnur, I mention our deep sense of uh, appreciation for Dr. A. Felix for his expertise talk on the topic Linear Algebra Using Scilab. Your session was live and active, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful and informative lecture. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. There is an announcement uh, for the participants. Uh, please join on the same link tomorrow, uh, sharp at 10 a.m. Um, let me leave the forum. Sure, sir. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much, sir. Thank really, you. it was informative, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Like. Thank you. You made, made me to learn. I really thank all of you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank so you. much, sir. Thank you, sir.